episode and find the numbers. I'd love to know what number. I have a hard time anyway. Before every single summon inside, I have to look up what number it is. So they've totally lost me on this one. They've totally outgamed me by constantly changing the numbers. I think I think what happens, someone at some point along the way initially decided like every episode of By the Numbers, both CSGO and LOL was going to be like a separate episode. But then they went back to the system I thought we were using, which was that each League of Legends one is like one, two, three, and then each CSGO one's one, two, three. So I don't know where we are right now, Munch. All I know is it's by the numbers time. So how are you? I'm just doing dandy. How was your time in England? It was great. That's about all these you said about that. It was CSGO, so it's not relevant <laughs> one to you. It was a good tournament. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't, yeah. didn't mean to infect our show with CSGO. Well, I don't, I don't like to make you guys feel bad about the fact that, you know, League of Legends isn't even really much of an eSport. It's sort of like three tournaments a year spread out as much as possible so that the minutia is, you know, dived into in a way that doesn't matter. But speaking of diving into minutia in a way that does matter, how about let's look at these numbers, <laughs> one so, What so anyway, a transition, so I know. Listen, I've learned a lot. I've picked up skills during my time becoming a professional on camera. So actually, let's just start with Korea, because I've noticed since you always like to just brag about shit and then it's always the Korean one that you've had the success. And why don't we just start in Korea for this one, Wanti? So do you have any good results to, to, to brag of this week? I actually didn't get a whole lot of a chance uh, to play this week, but I do have one that we can talk about. So let's just pull up the, uh, the second screenshot there just so we can look at the matchups for context. Um, and then we can talk about what picks I had. Because days three and four in Korea ended up all being two zeros, surprisingly. Yeah. Um, but the contest... Thanks, thanks for hyping that whole week for us. And, you know, every single match is going to be amazing. <laughs> so this is going to be like the week that tells us what every team's all about. And uh, <laughs> how, how'd that work out for well, you? It worked out just dandy because the games were good. But... Uh, so just take a look at this, all two zeros, CG over Samsung, Ku over IM, Najat over KT, SKT over Janeiro. So if we actually look at the lineup that I had then, uh, so this is the, not for, this is for a triple up, which means that if you're in the top third, you triple your entry fee when you get it back. So uh, in this case, I thought that, I mean, effectively, obviously, there's some heavy favorites. Like, I picked CJ, so I kind of picked across the favorites right here. Um, the only one that was kind of unclear was Najin or KT. But uh, actually, what ended up happening was Someday did very well in spite of the defeat. So I kind of picked on both sides of the matchup just a little bit. Um, it does seem like an extraordinary scoreline someone could have in a loss. Yeah. 13, 2, 17. So he's just an ELO hell, basically. Uh, yeah. Except Surprising. that he's someday. So actually, he deserves to be there, and that's a one-off. So now he knows how all his teammates used to feel back in the day when they were rocking numbers like that, and he was someday. <laughs> but where, yeah, where did yeah. this overall get you to? Uh, just like upper third. So okay. just upper third. Just taking a look at... Uh, you want to just get into the, the, the upper bracket, not trying to win one of those big competitions with like a crazy guess with, you know, an underdog that was underappreciated. But, you know, there you go. Okay, so in terms of League of Legends in Korea overall, relative to what we're going to think about here in terms of betting, so this isn't some, some an insight, remember, Monty. In relative to that, like you were saying, this week would kind of show us what we needed to know about certain teams. Ha have... Have certain matchups changed where you now have a sense of the ones that were in the middle of the pack at the top? Who, who's actually better now and who you'll be favoring more to win? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess what I'm very, I'm a lot more confident in a couple teams in Korea, like Jin Air, uh, who has shown a lot of consistency even against top teams, um, and less confident perhaps in a team like CJ or Najin, who tend to be a little more streaky. I noticed no mention of KT there, who managed to lose both oh, matches, Monty. How, yeah. how did that slip your mind? Oh, uh, yeah, KT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this Najin team, I don't have a whole lot of faith in them. Didn't they beat KT? I don't remember that, personally. It uh, may have happened. I didn't, I didn't have a lot of time, really? you know. Who knows, really? Yeah, who can really say what beating someone is? In the end, if you tried your hardest, isn't that just enough? Okay, so this week, starting out... We have day one is, well, I mean, I met, usually in Korea, the, the contests is day one and day two combined, right? And then day three and day four combined. Correct. 
So I'll just say the day one and day two all together, so then we can pick from among it the best matchup. So we've got CJ versus Ku, IM versus Samsung, Nanjin versus KT. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't these all three good matchups that both all, all the teams could win, basically? Yeah, that does make it a little bit difficult. I'd say that at this point, um, Samsung is almost is. I don't know. I think there are some favorites in Samsung Ku, which is on a, a pretty good win streak right now, and then Najin. Uh, but yes, you're right. I think there is going to be a lot of uh, a lot of possible, a lot of possibilities for upsets, and it's kind of uncertain which direction these matchups are going to go. There are only three games because uh, this week in Korea we're switching back to one game on Thursdays, so we only have seven best of threes instead of eight. And so of these That's three, which, which are you feeling is the biggest lock? Because it's actually quite hard for me to figure out which one it is. I would actually say Ku versus CJ, interestingly enough, um, because just Ku has looked so good recently and CJ on a bit of a downswing. Um, and Ku's players are pretty cheap. I mean, Smeb is 8,000. Hojin is 8,000. That's uh, that's really not too bad. Uh, Kuro and Prey remain the kind of top players to, to hunt after on on uh, Ku if they're going to get a win because of the points they put up. So that could be quite good, actually, uh, because they're not... They're not very expensive. I mean, they're kind of third down the list. So Hojin, obviously, I mean, actually, in terms of champions, he has like the number one KDA or something for Jumblers. So is he someone you've bet on in the past or is this just for this matchup? Uh, Hojin used to get more points when ahead. Uh, this last week, he fell down just a little bit. He used to be the number one point scorer when Ku was winning. But yeah, I mean, he's, he's good value for sure. Also... I mean, Samsung is very good value here because if we look at if we look at the IM versus Samsung game, one of those teams ha teams has to win, and all of the Samsung and IM players are incredibly cheap. So you could definitely fill out your rosters with both some Samsung players in, in like one lineup, and then switch it same lineup except fill it in with some IM players instead, and you're going to get some guaranteed points there. I would take Samsung, uh, and Fury is actually extremely cheap this week when he's going to carry IM. Uh, another player that's kind of cheap is Ignar, who actually does do well on IM when when his team wins. So, so who do you think is actually going to win that one? Because to me, that seems like a bit of a split. Uh, I think I mean, if, if anything, I would have led. I would have. I would have gone with the IM team to win that one. Actually, thinking of them. No, 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 no. I uh, no, no. I disagree. I think Samsung's looked much more solid than Incredible Miracle recently. Um, okay, well, since we've established, Monty, that I'm never going to be like the guy winning loads of money, I will just have to use my betting as like spiteful. There's going to be like a spiteful betting campaign <laughs> where I'm just going to try and prove you wrong. So I'm going to build my whole team around IM and uh, let me think, Najin players from now on, I think. And then we'll just, uh, they'll just be like an anti Monty team. I'll try and attack all of your fundamentally held principles and philosophies <laughs> on how the game well, should work. Much like in NA, the, the work I'm, the good, the charitable work I'm doing with uh, Dignitas and NME. Yeah. You are a saint. Well, the, the, why I would say Samsung is we saw these two teams play less than two weeks ago. This is actually a matchup that happened uh, just a couple weeks back, and Samsung absolutely destroyed IM. So I would have a lot of confidence in in Samsung coming into this one. I, I really would. Okay, so Fury is obviously actually quite cheap in this market, 6,000. I think that is some pretty good value personally. And if you want to go with the IM players instead, uh, the AD carry, Roar, uh, I don't know if they're going to run Roar or Sunstar this week. They ran Sunstar in their last match. Uh, Roar and Apple tend to be pretty high up there for IM. Um, in terms of points. So Najin KT. Now who's going to win this one? I don't know. Uh, this one's... I mean, they literally bit. just played last week as well. Yeah. And, and that one was obviously yeah. the 2-0 to Najin. So what do you think the factors were that made it a 2-0 there? Like, will they be replicated this week? I think that KT is becoming very um, predictable. 
uh, in that they go for the they go for Sivir and they can't really play much else. And so I think that that factor, their predictability, probably can lead to another Najin victory. Um, yeah. Because you know these I, salaries are telling us that KT is going to win, by the way. Because the salaries right. have, well, like Nagne is all, over 1,000 more than Goong. Um, Arrow is the most expensive AD carry by far, over 2,000 plus more than well, Zephyr the reason, LQ. So the there's a lot of value to that, on Najin here? The reason behind that is because Arrow and Score, I mean, Arrow's number two overall in terms of points while winning. He's only behind Song Yun, actually. Uh, he's, uh, Song Yun's taken that spot on Anarchy from Arrow. But if KT wins, and here's, here's the big caveat, if they win, they put up a lot of points. They really, really do. Uh, Arrow and Someday are both in the top five. They're two and four, respectively. Coco, also a player that puts up a lot of points. Score is number six in terms of points. When they win, they win hard. But KT was playing with this Renekton last week. I don't know really what they're doing in terms of their team compositions, but it just hasn't been working. And Najin was, has been playing very standard. I think that, uh, that Najin's still going to be the favorite going in here. And I'm not sure that KT is going to be able to adjust. But you can win big with KT. It just, would you have CJ, Ku, IM, and Samsung to pick in your team instead? It just seems like this is a, this is a big risk. And the price of getting the KT players may not be worth the results. So there's all, so so even in a world where someone wasn't sure which way to go on this, they thought Najin KT is 50-50, that actually essentially is telling you pick the Najin players and then you get more space for the other players you're going to get in your roster in terms right. of value. And OQ is very cheap, 7,900. Goong is very cheap. These are guys that that do put up points. I mean, Goong is... Goong, who puts up points? He has, he's the biggest point getter uh, just ahead of OQ when Najin's winning. And last week, they certainly did uh, very well in terms of points. I mean, Goon was putting up score, like, point, score totals like 8, 2, and 9. OQ was 7, 1, and 5. So a lot of points in this exact matchup for Najin last week. I think it's probably going to go that way again. I'm not sure if KT will do quite so badly. I don't see them replicating their redacted picks or, or the weird team comps they had, but... Who knows? So you said you've already addressed right so far that like AD carries a key position. You're talking maybe I'll take Fury. You can always take Raw. Well, obviously in this scenario, there's a world where someone could in theory take Prey and Zephyr. Yeah. If they really want to gamble, they can take Arrow. Right. You can only have two AD carries at most in your team. So which two are you feeling for this week for for this play day? Uh, Prey and Fury, more than likely. Prey and Fury. Okay, why, why Prey over OQ? Uh, because I'm more confident in Ku beating CJ than I am Najin beating KT. Even though we did see that very one-sided matchup last week, I think there were extenuating factors, like I said, in terms of KT's draft and their kind of weird Renekton pocket pick that they tried to run two, two games in a row. So uh, I think if KT had had more normal team compositions, it might have been a closer match. But I think with CJ's current form... They will have they will have some issues. Well, if someone does want to gamble big, if they take Arrow and they win, the numbers could be out of this universe. Right? Sure, yeah, he is a massive point getter. Win KT, win they win hard. If you want to pick KT players, your priority should be Arrow and Someday. They generally put up the most points. Arrow, Someday, and Score are the big ones. Um, also, KT is a little bit questionable right now because we don't know whether Nagne or Edge will play. They've been putting in Edge a lot and he just hasn't looked very good. So, On a similar train of thought, if you're one of these people who actually really does think CJ is going to win, Coco will get you absolutely insane numbers right now. He's like yes. 63 points when they win. Yes, Coco is the big point getter on CJ. Space also, the two teams... That, or the three teams that win the hardest in Korea, the big, big point winners that you want to go with, if you think they're going to win, are KT, CJ, and Anarchy. <laughs> All these teams put up a massive amount of points when they win. I just don't see CJ or KT winning this week, which makes them hard to recommend. So the next one, play days three and four combined, is Anarchy IM, CJ Jinnah, SK Telecom Spenu, 
and Ku Samsung. Now, the obvious lock is SKT Spenu, right? Hold on, let me pull it up real quick. It's being slow for me. Yes, anything with Spenu, you can trust that Spenu may not do so well. Well, and the team that's undefeated. Yes. That helps as well, right, Monty? You know, <laughs> that's like setting records. With undefeated. <laughs> yeah, it's all about Spenu for me, really. As long as Spenu's in the matchup, like, pst, the best no, team that's ever. Actually seen true. <laughs> Okay, no, it is true enough. with the, the Spenu, actually. That is actually Let's combine the true. two factors then. By the two combined, it is the lock of all locks, right? <laughs> yes, that is that is pretty disastrous. So SKT is expensive, though, as a result. Although Faker's only 8,500. But SKT isn't the team that puts up the big points when winning because yeah, sometimes they, they just the problem, they right? win too easily. Baker gets 31 points when he wins. Coco gets 63 points when he wins. Yeah. So actually, unless you... Basically, in that sort of a scenario, if you ever have the chance, there's very few... T the only situation in which you should bet on Faker over Coco is if you're like... like Obviously, Faker's a lock to get those 30 points. That's a, that's a positive. It's only when you think that the other guy is like... It's too questionable as to whether he will or not. Right. Like, Do you, do you pick Faker nowadays in any of our teams? Uh, I do sometimes just because he's a really stable pick and he's a very consistent pick. Um, he has a very low standard deviation, so you pretty much know how many points he's going to deliver in a game. And because SKT always wins, there's that too. Yeah. So where that's like one of your favorite actual phrases as well, like, oh, yeah, because damn, look at that low standard deviation. Get low, <laughs> bitch, get low. So that's your version well, true. of like it's the, it's the in the club, Monty. Fantasy. Yeah. Fantasy consistency, what can I say? <laughs> okay, fair enough. Your chauvinism for low standard deviations will forever be your vice, Monty. So yeah, anyway. So an interesting matchup in reference to what you said before is that Anarchy play IM. Now you've said, but as you mentioned already, Sanghoon is expensive for a reason. Is that if they win, he has insane numbers. Is yes. Anarchy going to win this match? Anarchy IM? Uh, I would think so. Uh, previously, that's what we've seen. That is a result that has been favorable to Anarchy. Um, so I would think that they would win, take this matchup. We saw it. Uh, when's the last time we saw it? It's been a little while, actually. I'm trying to remember the last result because now we have a precedent because we're into our second round robin. Uh, oh, they lost to IM in the last one. That's right. But I think Anarchy is a better team now, and IM is still struggling. So I would take Anarchy. Uh, now the question is, are these players worth it because they're so expensive? Um, especially when there's a lot of value picks, like the Jenner players are super inexpensive this week, and they're they're probably going to beat CJ too. And remember that Chaser does put up, you know, Chaser is very consistent in terms of his performance. But Anarchy. Uh, I mean, yes, that's the thing. Sangyun, Lyra, Mickey all put up crazy points when they win. Just trying to think if it's actually worth the value. I mean, Chesser gets you 32 points if he wins. Sangyun gets you like 60-something, 60 69. Obviously, he doesn't, it's not a guarantee he's going to get it this week, but in theory, uh, you, in theory, the value would have to be worth like half as much. Yeah. That's the thing. It's just See, these from are seeing so your teams expensive. before. From seeing your teams when you the ones that you won with, Monty. If I just go with the ones that you brag and show people at the beginning of the show, nearly always you don't take the people like this who are the most expensive in the entire league, no. guaranteed to get super points. You tend to just try and get. In fact, I think you tend to try and get more value around the middle part of your set, guys. So you have a couple I, of expensive ones, but then more middle and, and even the lower ones. You never just put in like a crap player, like sometimes I do to make myself have all the other good ones. You try to like mise away for that. You have no tip jar, basically. Your tip jar is empty at the end. Yes. Yeah, I do. I definitely swag try jar, like rather. It's not, it's not a tip. No. It's not actually tips. The There's swag jar the is very low. Self -air alpha draft. Yeah. yeah. That's your problem, you know, Monchi. I've often thought. You've compromised your swag in, in an effort to be right. That's, you know, that's a, sort of a microcosm of your persona that you've created on the internet, you know. <laughs> it's true. So it sounds like, but, in general, you're, you're probably just going to go for the, the Jeanette players over these Anarchy players, even though Anarchy 
is perhaps favored to win? Um, yeah, just because of the cost. Maybe if I can sneak like Mickey or or Song Yun in there, I will. Um, just because I think that they're going to come back and, and win the segment this time, uh, or win the the matchup this time. Ku though is very cheap, and Ku is very likely to beat Samsung. I feel like the Ku players are all really good value this week, just because they're they're usually third or fourth down in terms of salary, and I think they're likely to win both of their matchups. So, frankly, here I would take Ku and Ku and Jenner. I think are really reasonably priced, even below Ku's uh, rank below the CJ players. And so is Jin Air. Jin Air is significantly cheaper than the, than the CJ players, even though they're likely to win. So when people look at the CJ team, in the standings, obviously they're still pretty reasonably high up because of that big tie in the second place in the standings. So what is there a league-related reason as to why CJ is in free fall? Uh, they the just haven't been playing well. And they they finished out this last week. They 2 0 last week, but they played against very weak teams. And against the upper the upper echelon teams, they've been really failing recently. Of their players, which are the ones which you think are dropping off the hardest? Uh, I mean the whole team is. I think but see Coco and Space still put up numbers in their wins. And I think CJ will consistently beat the lower tier teams. I'm just concerned about when they have to face two upper echelon teams and arguably the second and third best teams in Korea in Ku and Janair this week, how they're going to do. I don't think they can cut it anymore. So if we take all your patterns, you're going to be going heavily for as many Janair players as you can get. Janair and Ku this week, I think, are really good bets. Okay. So just because, of how, just because of how this one works. So think about it this way. Anarchy, the play is extremely expensive. SKT Svenu, the SKT players are extremely expensive and unfortunately you're not going to get that as many points in the win, which they're almost guaranteed to get. But there's two value games, Ku and Jinair, CJ. So you're going to yeah. mainly be Jinair and Ku. And if you can take some of, you know, Faker's obviously a very safe choice. He's not that expensive this week. And if you want to take that gamble and start to get some Anarchy players and fill out rosters when they're going to win, the point total should be very large. So I think if you're going for a tournament format, take a, an Anarchy player or two. Okay. All right, let's move over to Europe now. I got to take so, a five-minute break, Thorin, for a second. So let's just go to a break real quick, and then we can then talk about Europe. let's go to a break.
Okay, it turned out that took less than five minutes, so we are back now to talk about Europe. Now, over in Europe, the first play day has five games on it, obviously. So we have Gambit Gaming, Copenhagen Wolves, SK Gaming, Rockat, Giants, Fnatic, Unicorns of Love versus Orihan, and Elements H2K. Now, it goes without saying that every single week, the lock apparently is Fnatic. So is Fnatic Giants <laughs> a lock here? I, I, I think that uh, that should be definitely in favor of Fnatic. I don't think they're going to go their entire season undefeated, however. So, But I don't think this is the week where they're really going to fall down. And as for, as for players to f- pick on Fnatic... You know, Fnatic actually isn't the best team to pick in terms of, of points, even when they win. Reckless is number one on that, followed by Febivin, uh, at least on this team. But they're, they're not really within... I mean, Reckless is, it's like, what, 10th overall in terms of points while winning. They're definitely better players to pick up who get more fantasy points when they're on lock. But obviously, you're not likely to get somebody who's more likely to win the game than them either. But... Go for reckless. So is, or is there there. An, is there another lock here that has more value players? That's going to be the question, right? Um, Gambit, I would say, is actually surprisingly good to pick up this week. And people might be surprised, but the player on Gambit that you kind of want to go with uh, in terms of fantasy points is actually Cabochard. He puts up more points on the team than anyone else at the given time. So wait a minute, Monty, because Elements is playing H2K, and we all know you think H2K is like the second coming. So why didn't you pick H2K to be Elements as the, as the best? Sure. Mark? Well, I'm not entirely sure about that because uh, last week Elements did, in fact, have a better week. Uh, they 2 owed, And, of course, it was against SK and Giants, so it's not the best indicator. Uh, I think, but also H2K went 0-2, so I'm not sure exactly of their current form at the moment. Um, And SK looking a little bit better by that regard. And also the H2K players are very expensive. For the most part. So you're going to stay away from H2K on this one? Well... Here's the thing. If H2K wins, Hjarnan is the top player in terms of points while winning in Europe. It's Hjarnan followed by Niels. So these are both good picks, especially since Origin's likely to be Unicorns of Love as well. These are the big, big point performers uh, from this region. And Amazing also, very good value. He puts up a million points when he wins. He's fifth overall in Europe and the highest jungler. So... Yeah, Am I right in thinking you're just actually scared straight and you will stay completely away from Rock Art SK? You don't know what's going on in that matchup, mate. I yeah. do not know what's going on in that no matchup one does. at all. No one does. <laughs> if you want to pick SK, though, uh, pick Fox. And if you want to pick Rock Art, pick their AD carry. That is, yeah, that's going to be probably your best bet right there. Yonkos, again, still likes to put up a bunch of points. He, uh, he could be a good pickup, as can Nuke Duck. Uh, go after those three players if you're going to pick onto Rocket. But Rocket players are expensive this week. Um, so what about players for Elements? Since you're, you're making it sound like they have a chance, and as far as I can tell, a lot of their players are reasonably cheap. True. I don't know about that, dude. I don't know if I would pick into the elements H2K just because we've seen, yes, we've seen that we've seen the 2 0 from elements and the 0 2 from H2K. I mean, I dude, dude there's only five matchups. You have to pick more than one. You can't stop like Gambit, two only. Gambit is the one that I would want to go for, honestly. Isn't like the I problem said. with the Gambit one, though, is that they're very cheap, but most of the players don't get that many points, though, even in wins. Yeah, Cabochard does, though. Cabochard yeah, There's, is there's one player, mate. We've got one out of the first matchup. <laughs> Yeah, and then, then it falls all your hard players. to like Betsy. Even forgiven and not doing that well in terms of points well ahead this season. He's actually uh he's actually tenth place out of AD carries in terms of points. So it sounds like you're gonna take Cabochard, a couple of players from Origin, 
and then you're going to put in whatever rock app players make it up. But then you start. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm scared of the rock app players, dude. I don't know if SK is going to win that. And where are you can. getting where are you getting the rest of these players from, mate? You can only Origin. have so many. Origin from one and Fnatic. <laughs> Fnatic. Okay, so you're going to pick the Fnatic ones that will make sense within that context. Yeah, if I could afford the Origin and Fnatic players, um, maybe I take some some SK guys if I can afford them. Uh, Fox is relatively reasonably priced, and he does well for uh, for SK when they're winning. If I put you on the spot and say who actually w should win Rock Out versus SK, who do you actually think right now? Because on one hand, <laughs> Rocket rises, but the other thing is SK seems to get upset wins. So who are you actually they, thinking should win? That? That's that's the issue, right? Rock Out did 2-0 last week. So and they did too well against some of the lower tier teams. I don't know. I I, I honestly well, have SK no is a idea. lower tier team, so problem solved. Yeah. I think I've translated what you said there, Morgan. But Rock SK also win. beat H two K last week. So yeah, but that's because they're not a lower tier teammate. So Rock, I'll use both sides of your logic here. Rocket beat lower tier teams. SK only gets surprise wins over better teams. Therefore, since Rocket isn't a higher team and SK is a lower team, you just solved. I've I've solved the Guardian not the, Monty. Yeah, the, the Rocket conundrum. will win. Yeah. Okay. Well, does Rocket Giants does have win. any chance of being the crazy team that beats Fnatic? Do you think? I don't think so. I don't think they're good enough. I think Origin and uh, and H two K have the biggest hope of taking out Fnatic, and since that didn't work out well in the last round, Robin. I wouldn't count on Giants to be the big upset team. Now, if they are, though, if that does happen, uh, Adra is a huge... Adra and Pepinera both do very well. So if you're in a tournament and you want to make multiple entries, you may want to take Adra and Pepinero and just pray for the upset because the points, if they get that upset, are going to be insane. So I obviously would have said, oh, but what if Unicorns Love does get the upset? But the problem there, obviously, is that Unicorns Love players traditionally don't get that many points. So is there yes. any that at least are, like, decent value relative to the points they get? Yeah, everyone seems to be, Var like, middle -ish. Vardags? Yeah, Vardags is the highest. Um, but even then, it's not good. And everybody else on Unicorns of Love is very bad. Like, that's the problem. Unicorns of Love, even when they win, they don't put up the points. So on elements, are there any players, if people are feeling the upset there, that make sense in terms of the salary that they have at the moment? I mean, Froggen's 7,000, but is he worth it if they win? No, I mean, elements is another team that puts up very, very few points when they win. Uh, actually, JWoww is the top player in terms of points while winning on that team. He's above even Froggen and Tabs. And all of them, that entire team is in like the lower third of players. Elements is a very poor fantasy team overall. You, They're just not going to produce that many points. Okay, right. I'm just pulling up the next play day. I mean, I'll tell you what it is anyway while I wait for the site to load. So the other play day is Fnatic Gambit, Rocket Unicorns of Love, Copenhagen Wolves Origin, Giants Elements, and H2K. Oh, that's last week, actually. Wait a second. Why would that be open? Oh, well. Esports PDA, you win again, right? Let's go. The, <laughs> the real ones are SK Giants, Fnatic Copenhagen Wolves, H2K Unicorns of Love, Gambit Rockat, and Element Origin. Now, of these ones, if you like Origin players, isn't Origin Elements an ideal game to bet on? Yep. Origin and also Fnatic versus Copenhagen Wolves. That's some pretty insane value right there. Uh, now, these players are going to be the most expensive this week. Uh, so even though those are very likely one-sided matches that, that should be, uh, you're not going to be able to have too many of those players just because of the, the, the availability of your, the, them for the salary. I'm more interested actually in this Giants SK game. Because Adra and you're Pepinero... You're going to the Giants side of that, I assume? I... I think you could get some really good value there. Again, if Giants win, Adrian and Pepinero are huge, huge point collectors, and they're not that expensive. So there could be some really good value right there for for Giants. Uh, Giants is five and five overall. What SK is still three and seven. So SK has been looking better recently, but 
Giants have been just a little bit more stable. I, so I think that actually, the Giants players, like I said, Adrian Pepinero could be some really good value. This is a week actually where, because Rockat play Gambit, Rockat players are actually reasonably cheap despite that though. Let me see. Yeah, yeah they're they all are. reasonably cheap actually. I mean, Nuke Duck's Jankos very is fourth cheap. highest, Jungler, but Nuke Duck's reasonably cheap actually, 7,300. And you're going to favor Rockat to be the, the favorite there? Obviously a close one. Now, Rockets' wins this season have come against Origin, interestingly enough, Copenhagen Wolves, Gambit, and Unicorns of Love. So they've already won this matchup, but granted, that was <clears throat> earlier in the season before Gambit had gotten their shit together a little bit. Um, in fact, I mean, it was it's yet to be one. determined was, how much in, Gambit had gotten yeah, their shit it was together, in, my friend. Yes, that is true. It was in week one, though, when... Gambit didn't even have practice computers. Or they couldn't practice for whatever reason, I don't really know. Yes, it so is why, to be determined. Why aren't you but Gambit, about Gambit's H2K. coming off a week? Gambit's coming off a week where they had to play against both Origin and Fnatic. Yeah, be being a team that loses and then playing the best teams and losing doesn't actually give you any points, <laughs> you know, mate. You you're just still a team that's not that good and lost, so and I know that sounds great, like, but okay. So H2K play Unicorns of Love, easy points, right? E easy points. Just pick up all those. Pick up Hyarnan. <laughs> Hyarnan, again, is really who you want. And Hyarnan's super cheap, but relative to the number of points he puts up. Yeah, he's still 9,100, and he's still third overall. But again, Hyarnan, when they win, is the most valuable player in Europe in terms of points. He averages more than anyone else. So Hyarnan... Kassing, actually. Kassing, he's another player, shockingly, who you want to pick up. Kassing is number two in terms of H2K's fantasy points. Because uh, Ryu tends to play a more more uh, supported mid lane role. And Kassing is a flashy player who gets a lot of assists with, with his engages. So Kassing actually has some pretty good value this week, too. Especially in light of the fact he's not he's only 200 cheaper than Mithy, who he gets more points than and wins. And he gets m much more points than Yellow Star, who he's... 300 less than right. so if it's between and those Kassing, three players yeah when i say because he puts up points like i beat it he gets like 33 points a game or 32 and a half he's above you know reckless in terms of points while winning on average that is I mean, that really says something that there's value to this guy he's above nuke duck febivin ryu uh <laughs> like all, vardags freeze these are all players that we know do very well and who are in positions to carry, and Kasing still gets more points on, on average when winning than, than they do. That's, that says a lot. So in the previous weeks, when we started out this show, oftentimes we used to talk about the Fnatic players. Like, okay, yeah, they're a lock to win. Like, the points are good. Unfortunately, because they always win, though, the salaries are always incredibly, incredibly high. Which ones of them at the moment do you think aren't that worth it? Because you're saying Reckless here gets less than um, Kasing. I know Febovin's always stupidly high. Like, he's, he's the second most expensive well, player in the league right now, but he only gives you, let's see, he only gives yeah, you 31 points. Yeah, he's about 12th overall. Uh, Reckless, okay, here's, here's the thing. Origin players do better. There are three Origin players in terms of points uh, that do better than any Fnatic player. Niels is number two overall in the league. Then we have Amazing. Then we have x -Pec -A. All three of these players are above anybody on Fnatic whatsoever. So that is, that's a major factor to consider when you're, when you're looking at price. If Origin and Fnatic, you're feeling very comfortable that both of these teams are going to win, then you definitely the better investment is in the Origin players. Uh, in fact, for example, this week, Febivin is 1,100 more than Xpeke, but Xpeke averages more points than Febivin. So considering I think that Origin and Fnatic are both going to win, although it is, I would say, more of a lock that Fnatic uh, wins because they're playing Copenhagen Wolves compared to Elements, then, yeah. I think I just think that that the the origin players are going to be better value. That's it. Okay, let's go over to NA now. Just finding. Okay. 
So over in NA, the first play day is Dignitas Teammate, CLG Gravity, Cloud9 Liquid, Tip NME, and TDK TSM. So TDK TSM in the past would be like, haha, 100% a lock. Is it actually a lock still now that those players actually made it there, Monty? Well, uh, just from watching the games last week where TDK played with their new lineup, they did pretty convincingly beat Dignitas, a team that is technically towards the top of the standings. You know, no, I say they are literally that. towards the top of the standings. Monty. <laughs> I know you're going to say like technically good or something, and then you bailed out. But they are, no, they are categorically at the top, near the top of the standings. Right? That can't, That's that true. Can't be they right, are seven and three. But yeah. That's a fact TDK's, from its statement. Uh, TDK actually did look. I mean, it was it was not a it was not a close win either. I think TDK really showed Dignitas. Uh, how strong they can be with this new lineup. And this is a lineup that they can now more actively practice with also. I think that TDK may have some some sleeper picks this week, honestly. Because if you look at it, the TDK players are all extremely cheap. Like, super cheap. If Ninja they can is the actually, cheapest mid laner. Yeah. Seraph is the cheap, 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 cheapest top laner. And TDK, I mean, for example, Emperor after his one win, and again, obviously just a single sample size right there, but if Emperor wins, Emperor put up 30, uh, 37 plus points. He's like 6th, 7th overall in NA already after that, just that one game. But Emperor doing, doing a lot of work so far. So let me ask you this. With that said, they are playing the best team in the league. Yep. Is the fact that they're so cheap what makes this like the fact that it's so cheap we haven't seen enough to know that they definitely won't be have a chance what makes right. this like a potential value make one team just around them and then a couple of established people right exactly i mean you can do if, okay, if i'm entering a tournament this week and i want to just enter one lineup and pick heavily into tdk that's where you could get the real bonanza in terms of points right and then maybe you pick just based on the rest of the matchup, maybe you fill out the roster with like a couple dig guys or a couple of uh, team impulse guys. Uh, probably team impulse going to be your your better your better choice right there because Zhao Wei, like a player like Zhao Wei Zhao, does get so many points when he wins, and you have to imagine they're going to beat enemy. Um, yeah, because the point there is basically that obviously it sounds like wow, how can you guys hate on TSM? They are top of the league. No, it's not so much TSM. It's more the fact that maybe TDK is much better than people thought. Maybe actually there may be only a 30% to even win, but that's a lot more than when they were like 1% right. to win when they had all the subs, you know. And it, it just depends on the kind of contest you're going for because that's that's the, the context of these picks. Because if you're going for the tournament, you're going to have to get some value picks to get a lot of points. And that's something, you know, you're probably, if you're going to play a tournament, you're probably going to submit multiple rosters to said tournament and go about things that way. Um, but yeah, if you're going to, if you're going to try like a 50, 50 or something like that, I probably wouldn't do, I probably wouldn't be, uh, be picking the TDK players. You're going to be wanting something more consistent. And since TSM is most likely going to win that game, um, then you want to go for somebody like Bjergsen, who has been very stable and who's that big point total uh, point getter, actually, on TSM. Interestingly, if you're picking on TSM, the, the player that you would likely pick up after Bjergsen is going to be Santorin, because he puts up the second most points on TSM. So... Remembering that name value alone does not actually determine how well you do in the game. Team Liquid C9 should be a lock for Team Liquid, correct? Yes. Yeah. Looking at the valuation of Team Liquid players, they're actually not the most expensive. Phoenix is 7,000. Piglet is actually only 7,100. He's, he's the same as Emperor this week. He's less than Nian Tonso. So yes. Piglet's a pretty good pick. Piglet is, but Piglet is third on his team in terms of points. Uh, on Team Liquid, Quas should be the, the primary focus. Quas and then uh, Phoenix had had quite a few points last week, obviously, with his crazy Azir performance. Um, so Quas and Phoenix generally average more points than Piglet does. 
Uh, so Quas should be the primary focus, I think. And Quas is very inexpensive. So there's two matchups here where... So the number one is Dig versus Teammate. Now, based on everything we know, isn't this where you, you pick into the Dig players that are, have got yeah. good numbers? Gamsu, JJ. Yeah, Gamsu is expensive though. That's that's my reservation here. And when I when I look at this, Gamsu and Quas have virtually identical points while winning, except and both of them I feel are likely to win these matchups, both Team Liquid okay. and Dignitas. Except mm -hmm. Quas is cheaper, so I would actually almost always pick Quas in this situation. See what happened here, Monty? Is uh, you know when you kept like you found like you sort of found the secret formula to how the stock market works. That you'd found out that if you bet on Fury and you pick these certain players in the Korean scene, Chaser, then you always benefited. Actually, what happened was obviously Alpha Draft employees watched this show and they got scared when they heard how close I was getting to not only being like the guy who <laughs> wins the money. But having the insane swag jar, because essentially what the swag jar, to me, the swag jar just shows what a baller I am, that I can leave this money over. But what it really says is what a bad job some of them are doing. And they were worried. So they were like, right, we just better pump those salaries up so that when he bets them, there's no swag jar. So listen, I don't, I don't quite, I'm not, I'm not happy that the swag jar has been taken away from me, but I will still bet these players. Like Gamsu is still a great pick for this week, surely, against teammates. Yes, 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 he is. He is a great pick. Absolutely. And he's what is, the... What, He's the highest player in terms of points on, on Dignitas. It goes Gamsu and then Core JJ. These are the two players that you want from Dignitas if you think Dignitas is going to win. What is the... What, which way does the wind blow on tip versus enemy? You, you have to think that goes to Team Impulse. You, you have to think that. And if you're going to pick tip, pick Xiao Wei Zhao and pick Rush. These are the guys that are that put up the points on Team Impulse, and the fact that Rush, you know, I'm going to say Rush is cheap, which may be surprising, considering he's number two overall in terms of junglers, but he's only 7,500. He's 2,400 cheaper than the number one pick, which is Santorin. And yeah, Santorin does put up a lot of points when he wins, but so does Rush. And uh, Rush actually puts up more points on average than Sant Santorin in a victory. So Rush is actually some very good value right here, I think. If you think, though, that enemy can win this, there's a lot of value in their picks right now. They're, they're, they're very cheap overall, except uh, basically I, I think it's only – I think the mid and the jungle are like medium range, and then most yeah, of the others are near the bottom. The problem with enemy is that while Inox and Otter started this season with a huge number of fantasy points when enemy won, they've since really, really dropped off to kind of the lower mid to like mid, actually lower, like bottom 50%. Even the top player on enemy for points Otter is not doing well as, as an AD carry. He's ninth overall in AD carries uh, in fantasy points out of the 10 or so in NA. I... I don't know about that. Even enemies' wins haven't been impressive. Right. Enemy's not a team that wins big, but Tip, on the other hand, is a team that when they win, they win big. I can see what's going on here, right? I understand. Here's the problem. When you're going to bet on these lower teams, you need it to be where when they win, they get a lot of points. So you know what, Monty? You know those hellish lineups I was making of Dig Enemy? Enemy, you've betrayed me now. You're not even getting the points when you get the upset. So now I'm going to make it dig teammate. Those are my new, my, that's my new pairing. Yes. The hell spawn right. pairing. Dig and teammate. Oh. And then you, I have to gamble teammate wins and dig will win just because Odie's like sacrificing members of the family to the Lord of Light or something. I don't know. I don't know what's going on there, but whatever he's doing, keep at it, buddy. I need those wins. And uh, sorry, Apollo actually is the highest point total getter on, on tip, but he does very well. And Apollo is, is value this week. And, I know why you're mentioning Team 8. So here's the thing. When Team 8 wins, Nien is the number one player in NA in terms of points. Now, they're not going to win very many, but if Team 8 wins, it's, it's going to be Nien going crazy in terms of points. So if you ever think Team 8 is going to win, Nien is going to be insane value. And speaking of insane value, CLG this week. Absolutely crazy value. Uh, sure... I think they're going to beat Gravity, and Gravity just doesn't put up points even when they win. That's the problem, is that Gravity overall is a very low point total team. If you want to take one player on Gravity, take Alltech. Uh, he's pretty far ahead of anyone else on his squad. Everyone else on Gravity is just absolutely terrible. Like, 
Gravity's a team that wins through coordination and teamwork, not from getting a bunch of kills. So obviously much more interesting to watch for from a like professional viewership perspective, but really, really poor in terms of fantasy. In the meantime, you like CLG? Well, uh, let me tell you, they have three out of the top five players in NA are on CLG, Doublelift, Poe Belter, and Zion Spartan. And they can all be yours this week because they're not expensive at all. Zion Spartan's only 6,800. Yeah, like, double of Tony seventy nine hundred, which is five hundred less than Altex. Yeah, was in that you matchup. think you think CLG is going to win this week? If you believe CLG is going to win, the value here is crazy because when CLG wins, these guys put up crazy good points. And Zion Spartan, yeah, thirty seven yes. points, which is the highest Zion top Spartan. laner. Yeah, and, and yet this fifth. week he is like no, he's worse than that. He's the seventh most expensive, well, technically he's tied for yeah, sixth yeah. most expensive top laner, so the value but there can yet, be insane. But yet he's the fifth, he's fifth overall in terms of points while winning. Again, double if Poe Belter and Zion Spartan are two, three, and five in terms of points while winning. So if CLG wins, the fact that all of these guys are middle of the table in terms of their salary, I mean, that's, the value there is crazy to me. Do you have any, like in terms of fantasy stats, is there a player on C9 who is going to turn the corner at any point soon? Sneaky. I mean, if, me, if they win, meet yourselves good stats. Let's see, here's a pretty well, decent sneaky. number. Sneaky. Sneaky and, sneaky and balls are top for C9. Sneaky, sneaky balls, medios, when they actually win. Incarnation looks to just not is be Is it conceivable very, they can win this matchup? I mean, it's possible, I suppose, but Team Liquid, I would, I would give a pretty substantial edge to. Okay. Who do you think is, uh, just looking at the salaries for this week, is there any player who's really low down who you think's like incredible value? I'm just going to the bottom now and see who there are. Oh, I forgot to ask you, actually. I should have really done this for every region, so I'll just do it right now for NA. Uh, if you have to pick a team... Which team makes the most sense to pick in NA on this play day, at least? Uh, probably Dignitas or Team Impulse. Why, why, would, they, why would that be? Because I think they're the most likely to win, and that's what you really want, is the team that you think has the highest percentage chance of winning. I don't know. I, I mean, obviously you could say TSM as well, but... I don't. I just don't know enough about new TDK to be one hundred percent confident about that. Okay, I think that's this week's show. So hey, no, we got to do day two of NA. Isn't that oh, what we just did? Was it? <laughs> oh no, it was day one. You're right, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, wait a second. Okay, so day two is Dignitas Liquid, Team Eight Cloud Nine, TSM Gravity, CLG Tip. NME TDK. So, first oh of man, all, the TDK value this week I think is pretty crazy. Is oh yeah, because of, obviously we still they've still yet to play even the first day of this week, so you can get your money in now. So, this is where you think they can win this matchup as well. Um, or they're close enough that the value doesn't matter essentially. I'm just I I. It's hard for me to say because I need to see that how they play against TSM. If they put up a fight against TSM, then I think they should be favored to beat enemy, actually. Um, and obviously Emperor is more expensive here. He's fourth overall because there's a, a, a higher chance that on this second day they actually do some work um, against enemy. Whew. Like, that is... But still, they're not that expensive, and they, they, that could be really big. What do you think of, uh, like, how, how, how close is TSM Gravity to actually to being a lock? Are you concerned that Gravity will Not win that, this match? Yeah, I would definitely be concerned that Gravity's going to win that match. CLG versus TIP is very interesting because both of these teams are big point earners. 
Uh, so whoever wins that is going to be putting up probably a crazy, 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 crazy amount of points. But I'm not confident on that outcome either. In fact, I'm not confident on hardly any of the outcomes this week, actually. I'd say C9 is likely to beat Team 8, but that that's the only one that I would really feel comfortable. I, In fact, I would be scared to to pick rosters on this day because but there's so many close matchups. I, I know I mustn't. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not compelled to select Thorin. So is it this one of the times though when you it's time to gamble on teammate and take it that they they take down C9? Mm, nah, I just go for C9 here. I just pick sneaky. Sneaky is not that expensive, and I think C9 will beat teammate. And no, I'm not compelled to pick. You know, Thorin, sometimes I just look at a, a, a selection on a group of days and I'm like, I'm not going to pick a fantasy roster for this because I have no idea what's going on and it's an entire crapshoot. And that's how I feel about this. CLG tip, I, like all the matchups are super volatile, right? There's not a single clear-cut matchup on this day. Okay, it should but be, with that said... It should be, it should be a, you know, a very exciting series of games on that day to watch, but I would be scared to select. Now, wait, a minute, yes. wait a minute, wait a minute. Let, let me just explain something to you, Monty. If CLG tip is like worrying you, then the reason you're not worried is because of how valuation works. So all I say to you is, oh, you think CLG is going to win, but you're worried. <laughs> Double is the second cheapest AD carry in the league. And Apollo's very cheap as well, uh, even though... He is four. The double lift and Apollo are two and four in terms of points while winning. So, so there we go. You, you start building a team around that valuation. The value is what makes you you pick a team there, Monty. Also, core is very cheap, which is which is interesting because Tignitas definitely has a chance to to beat Team Liquid. Don't think that's likely, um, but I would say, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, all of the dig players except Gamsu are really cheap. Everyone's bottom, and then Gamsu's like fourth from the top. It's almost like they're sending us a message about that team. Which player's actually good, and which ones shouldn't exist? <laughs> oh, come on. Core, Core actually isn't that far behind Gamsu when we talk about fantasy points. Um, those are definitely... It, those are the two players out of everybody on Dignitas. That if, if you think Dignitas is going to win, those should be your guys. The biggest problem for core is that AD carries clearly get so many of the points that like even bottom place AD carry is 7,500. Yes. Which will get I mean, you like not... right into the top half of a top laner, for example. Right. Uh, and it just has to do with what the valuation of those top laners are. Because, for example, Quas is worth more than a lot of AD carries, than about half the AD carries in the league. Um, so, Is that Reggie actually started playing uh, Alpha Draft tournaments and uh, he was picking Wild Turtle because he was like, listen, I know Turtle's good, like I know we're going to win this week. And then he started realizing like, hey, even in wins, he doesn't seem to get that many points, you know, like it, it outraged him. So he was like, I must get someone else in to, to potentially win that because he, it's, see, it's losing, it's losing money is the only way certain people will learn, you know, want to. The qualitative <laughs> judgment isn't, isn't gonna, always going to work for everyone, you know. That's just a little imaginary <laughs> anecdote that I made up for this show. Yeah, very good. I'm sure that's, uh, that just brings it full circle, doesn't it? Yeah, the, the, exactly. fantasy, the fantasy now affecting roster decisions. Right, in some Although, ways, f fantasy always affected roster decisions, <laughs> but of a different type. <laughs> Not one that you guys can participate in and profit from. I think that's well, it for this week. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, especially, me. no, this last day, I don't know if I would actually pick a team on this last day, to be quite blunt, just because it's incredibly volatile. Basically, unless you really must, don't bet on that day. If anything, just go to Korea, where there's some insane valuation on the day when yes. Jun Air and coup play i think it's the second second set of days those make any teams you want around those and you can have a good chance i think well that's what that's what i would think okay well that's it for this week see you all again next week Bye.